Hi, this is Chris from iSolutions. I'm here to show you a couple of things we got cooking in the iSolutions lab. This is a demo file that we created. It's a video training demo. And the story here is that um, users can put this on their iPad. Um, it, it, the idea is that you would have an organization where managers would assign video training uh, to their employees. And we've given it a way that the managers can kind of monitor the progress of, of the video training um, for each user. Uh, but also a kind of an interesting way, very subtle way of using some uh, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to manage whether or not the user has actually watched the video. So the idea here is you're looking um, at the iPad version, is that um, you can be logged in. Here I happen to be logged in as a manager. You'll notice down here in the bottom left-hand corner that um, you've got different groups and managers are in bold and users are not. Um, so the idea is that if you're a manager, you can actually browse the employees, see who the employees are, see how many courses they have assigned to them, uh, click on one of them and see what kind of progress they've made. So here's 13% complete. So that's the idea, Very, pretty simple FileMaker database uh, programming there. But here under the My Courses is where if you log in, if I'm logged in as this person, I can see the different courses that I have assigned to me and I can see what percent complete I have of those courses. So let's look at this first one up here on the top. Again, just simple FileMaker stuff here. But what's interesting is that we've got some calculations that tell us whether or not the, the videos, this is a course, and there's the several videos within the course. And if all of them were watched, they'd have a checkbox next to them, and it would say 100% complete. And my manager would be able to see that I'm done with this. But if they've been started but not completed, we see a little dash. And if they haven't been started at all, then we see nothing next to it. So um, let's go down to one of these where we haven't even started it. So I'm going to click on the aligning video. And now this is what's interesting here with the JavaScript. So what you're actually seeing on screen, this whole area here is a web viewer. And instead of just showing a container with the video in it, we're, uh, we've got a web viewer that uh, is pointing to somewhere where the videos are being hosted. The idea is that um, we don't want to just show a container or just a, a web page with a video because then the user is going to get their own uh, play buttons and most importantly the fast forward. Uh, so we want to make sure that the user watches the video so they can only play or pause and come back to it later. And the only thing that would indicate that it's complete wouldn't be the user checking that it's complete, of course. But instead, uh, when we get to the, we have some JavaScript in here that detects when it gets to the last frame it will actually run a FileMaker script through an FMP URL that will set this value as complete. So let's take a look at how this works. So first of all, I haven't watched this video yet, so I see I've got a play button and a pause button. If I hit the play button, you see that a video will appear, and this is a video that's on a web server somewhere that we're pointing to, and um, it's about 10 seconds long or so. But I'm gonna pause this video right now. So you see I hit this pause button, and what that's going to do is run a script. This is a, a FMP URL running a script in FileMaker that uh, creates a log record that says that this video was watched by this user and it was paused. Here, if you see on the very bottom left-hand corner, it was paused at 11 seconds in. And what, what it does is it changes the status of the video so that now in the HTML, we've got some conditional HTML here that shows a, a resume button instead of a pause button, or I'm sorry, a resume button instead of a play button and then the pause button. Again, no fast forward. So the reason for that is, if you go back to the back button, this now tells us that the aligning video has been started but not completed. So if I go back to the aligning video, it tells me where it was paused. And if I hit the resume button again in the uh, web viewer, the JavaScript will run. But what's interesting is it goes to the log record that was created and tells us where to pick up the video. So this way the, the user can watch the first couple minutes of a video if they want to, and then sort of pick up when they have time later. But here's the really compelling part of it. We want to have a way, the, the, the challenge here is how do we know that the users actually watched a video without fast forwarding through it? Well, the only way that this video can be marked as complete is if it continues on to its last frame. So this video is only about 10 seconds long, so I'll let it run through to the end. And when it reaches the last frame of the movie, uh, our JavaScript detects that the movie is actually done, and then it will run an FMP URL driven script that will go into this field here and mark this as completed. So you'll see here in a second that the video has been completed. It reaches the last frame. And now it runs the script that will 
update be completed. You see in the upper right hand corner in the bottom left hand corner it also changes the status to finished. And you'll also notice because there's some calculations that are driven from that that um, the video is now marked as complete. So how is this working? Well let's move over into uh, FileMaker just to kind of give you a little peek behind the scenes. Here's the video uh, the, the, wi uh, the window that plays the video and you see that we've got some um, resizing on here so that it could play on different devices if need be but if we go into layout mode and take a little bit of a peek behind the scenes we'll see that this is another classic situation where we've just got a web viewer that's pointing to a calculation this is again where we're using FileMaker's calculation engine to uh, help us create or output the HTML that's necessary for, in this case, uh, a video to play. So here's actually the, um, the HTML portion. You'll notice up here, let me just cancel this out. So here I've got some HTML. It's really the same kind of thing that we've shown you in other videos. We've got the uh, data URL so that we can create some HTML. And then here, what we're doing is we're just running several different uh, JavaScript value, uh, JavaScript uh, scripts. And we've written those to application memory when we first log in. But you'll notice that this one's a little bit different. This is a different kind of strategy here. So there's the three JavaScript files, and then we've got this calculation here. And the rest is just simple HTML, and then we've got this body, which I'll show you in a second. But let's look at the JS vars. In this case, what we did is we did things a little bit differently. Uh, inside JavaScript, you can set variables. So you just put VAR and then the name of the variable and then what it represents. So what we did is we created a calculation that says the FMP URL is going to be this value. And we it's kind of like a let function, uh, but the JavaScript can, can read. So we say let FMP URL equal this, let user ID equal this, and so on and so on. And what it does is it outputs just a simple calculation field. And what we did is um, we embed that calculation field inside the HTML. And what it allows us to do is then point to those variables within the JavaScript, within the session that's created, and uh, embed uh, unstored FileMaker calculation-driven information right inside um, our uh, web viewer. You'll also notice down here we've got an HTML body field. Uh, this is the field that you see here. It's just another calculation. And all that it's doing is showing either a pause button or a play button, depending on whether or not the action of the video is paused or if it hasn't even been started yet. So this is just a simple way that we use the FileMaker calculation to dynamically tell us uh, whether or not we should show pause or resume buttons. So all this driven from calculations. Um, and you'll notice over here in the file... that I've got this screen set up that shows the different JavaScript. You see here's the main JavaScript. This is all the JavaScript that we wrote uh, to show the video and to determine the stop time and start time. Here's, by the way, the, uh, the output of that calculation field where we're that let field type thing where we're setting all the variables. We've got some uh, calculations that tell us whether or not this thing is hosted, and if so, what's the name of the file, what's the host name, so that we can run an FMP URL. We even have some calculations in here uh, for determining whether or not this is a... Um, oh, I guess actually I've got that in a different calculation. Sorry. Uh, it determines whether or not it's um, on iPad or not, and if it's on the iPad, we don't put the IP address in here. We just put a dollar sign. But something interesting here, we've got this poster image, and you'll notice that we've got a uh, Base64 encoded version of the image, uh, and that's just for the sake of the demo, but you could encode a thumbnail as the preview for a movie, for example, and then show that before the user hits play. Here's some cascading style sheet information that we're referencing. Um, you'll notice that uh, we've got some hard-coded uh, uh, play button and pause button inside of there. And here's the output of the uh, HTML body portion, uh, the calculation that I showed you earlier. And what really makes this all run is that um, when the user hits play, it's actually, uh, or when the user hits pause, it's creating a record in a log file. We've got a script here, 
we go under manage scripts that is uh, log viewing and every time the user hits pause it opens up a new window goes to a layout creates a new record stores the pause time in there the user ID sets the action closes the window and then sets a new variable to finished if uh, if in fact it ends up being finished so all we're doing is just creating a record over here and uh, that tells us what the last pause time was. And if we're always looking at the most recently created one, we know where to pick the video up again. So it seems like a lot of overhead. Honestly, this is maybe about three or four hours worth of programming work to allow us the ability to really control the user experience uh, from uh, not allowing them to scrub and being able to put any kind of video in here that we want to uh, and ensure that the user actually watches them. And the rest is just FileMaker stuff. So another example of a FileMaker calculation engine and some JavaScript all working in conjunction together to provide some kind of interesting and compelling uh, functionality that you couldn't do with FileMaker alone. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks.